Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Painter. In this video, I want to build up another sculpt from the Age of Sigma Dominion Collector set, the new box set that is out with a whole bunch of miniatures and two armies to play your games. I'm going to be building up this Hobgrot Slitters sculpt. Uh, I just want to say before I start this video, I'm quite new to Warhammer, I'm quite new to building miniatures. I, I normally play board games, they come pre-assemble or single, you know, just single piece molds. So while I would like to show you other new painters or anybody that these are a piece of cake to build, I just want to let you know that I am not a, an expert at it. So do check the comments below. Let me know pro tips for building these and let everybody else know pro tips. And I'll go through some of them from the previous video and let you know what people said in the comments. So let's just talk about the tools that you're going to need to build up this miniature. Uh, there's some additional ones from the last video you might notice, and that's from the helpful comments we received. I just want to cover some additional steps. I didn't mean for it to be a full, this is how you build it and this is the best way of doing it video, but you're right. Let's just talk about a few extra ones I could have used that video and I'll do them in, in, in building up these sculpts. The first and most important thing is you're going to need a pair of nippers and I've got three choices here, an incredibly cheap pair. These are sort of one, two dollars, red grass games, expensive pair and Citadel is really expensive expensive pair as well. Now you will get, you'll get by, you'll get by. These will work fine. I use them for a year that, you know, they're, they're okay. You can build miniatures, but these miniatures aren't cheap. And I showed you this in the last video. So apologies if you've already seen it, but you can sort of see the cut, look at that cut and it's all over the place. Now I've used these a lot and maybe they're now damaged and it wasn't that bad when I first started, but it did cause this whiting and it does sort of nip and rip. These are almost nippers and not snippers. It did sort of do that to, to them from the from day one. And I'm sure there are pairs that don't do that, but that's that's cheap and then these are expensive. So let's just show the difference. Straight through, piece of cake. There's no whiting around the edge, a little bit in the center, but it's fine, it's straight, you know. And that's it. So I'll just cover that again. Apologies if you've already seen it, but I, I caught myself by surprise with <laughs> the difference between the two and I just wanted to share again. I'm going to be using one of these two expensive pairs and I, I enjoy them both. Citadels are just longer and I find like I can get closer to the miniature, which isn't advised. You should cut away and file towards the final finished piece, but I, I'm lazy. I just want to cut nice and close, one snip, done. Redgrass games are equally sharp, equally easy to use. They're all, there's less resistance. These, these take more handwork, which is a small thing, but if you're cutting a lot, these like I could do these, with, a child could do these with a little thing of keep them away from your kids. They're ridiculously sharp. And then they're just a little bit softer. So if you're doing a lot over time, it just doesn't hurt your hand as much. So that's those. You're going to need a pair of nippers. And like I said, if money matters, the cheap, you'll get by with the cheap. So don't worry too much. The next thing is a little file. As I mentioned, if you cut away from the, the miniature, you cut, cut them off at the sprue. Let's just demonstrate that. So I, I often cut right against this, this hobgoblin skin just to make it quicker. But really, you want to be cutting a bit away and then just filing towards the skin, you're going to get a better, less risky finish. And if you're going to do that, you're definitely going to need a file. Now I have the Army Painter set. There's like three or four or five of them in the set. And I just pick whichever one suits what I'm trying to file down. There's one for like nearly every angle and shape you're doing. So you're going to need a file. Also just to smooth down any rough bits. Another tip, and I, I didn't do this in the last video because I'm just getting lazy, is using a craft knife. I used to cut them off the sprue with a craft knife. Do not do that. Even if money does matter buy a pair of nippers it's it's just it's more effort more risky and a little bit dangerous trying to ping them off everything pings it sort of snaps through so i wouldn't advise you a craft knife what it is good for and i don't know if we'll find any hopefully i'll find some when we're cutting it up is just sort of scraping down the mold lines a lot of people advise using the back of the blade mine are pretty blunt so i can just use gently the front of the blade and i'm just scraping off the mold lines. And I'll show you that if I come across any, but it was worth mentioning. It was a good comment. So there we go. And then another comment that came up, I normally use super glue, but I do have plastic glue. And when I can find it and I have to go and look for it, it's just an alternative to super glue. And what that will do is mostly it, it sort of melts the the two pieces of plastic you sit in together and it gives a better, stronger bond. And because it melts, it can even sometimes close the gap and, and sort of melt it over. I, I don't often see that happen, but it, I think it, it sets faster as well. So there's a few perks to using plastic glue. If uh, if I was you, I'd just try them both out. It's not going to cost you too much and, and get a feel for which one you like the best. As, as I said, I, I swap between them and I, don't, I, I get by with super glue and it's always what I've got on my desk. So it's a little bit easier. Anyway, let's build a miniature. So of these Hobgrot slitters, I'm going to be using, uh, I'm going to be building 14B. That is the scrap 
totem bear. I just thought it looked cool and I'm, I'm bound to make a painting video, right? So I'm picking the ones I want to paint. So we're going to go with this. And as always, the instructions are crystal clear, super easy, barely an inconvenience. So we're just going to be looking for number one, number four, number six, number five, and a 25 mil base as well to build this on at the end. So you just grab your sprue and start playing. Where's Wallow? Where's Wallow? And that's like a combination of Waldo and Wally. Where's uh, Where's Where's Wally? And we'll find those numbers. So here is number one, and we're going to get those nippers, and we're going to get nice and snug. Or I'm going to get nice and uh, nice and snug. It's not necessarily advised. You might want to cut a little bit away and then file this down, but I am lazy and I like to be quick and I don't tend to slip so it doesn't cause me a problem, but we'll just snip them all of these little supports off of this part of the sculpt and we free up number one. For this video, I'm gonna mix it up. Check the other video if you wanna see. Sometimes I, I fix each piece up uh, one at a time. This time let's cut them all off and then do the next step. With that in mind, we're gonna need number four. So again, just snip, snip, snip. So this bit's really hard to get to, so I'm just gonna cut it off of the sprue and we'll fix that in a minute. Again, this all of this bit's hard to get to, so I'll just snip it, I'll just snip it away from the miniature and we'll deal with that in a minute. So now it's nice and free from the sprue. I can get the nippers in nice and close. And the shoulder. And his other shoulder. Need number six, his face, snip. And I'm gonna do this bit from behind, snip. Number five is his totem, and just need to be careful. We leave that little bit of detail on the model, which isn't part of the, the support. And it's at this point I realized I could have had B or C. Well, I built the slightly more complicated one, but I could have had a choice. I didn't even realize there was two totem bearers. Well, that's cool to know. The next step, I'll just use my craft knife and just smooth off any bits that I couldn't nip as close as I want before we file them down. I always do the underneath of the miniature and then wonder why, because you can't see it, and then stop doing that. Don't cut that bit off. I thought that was a, a bit of sprue, but no, it's a nail going through, a little bit of detail. So I don't know if you can see, but just here, there's a mold line running through this. So as I mentioned, you could use the back of the blade like so. There, that mold line's just disappearing, gone like so. Uh, and and yeah, I could probably use the front of mine because it's blunt. So if you see me using either, that's why. So down the side of his body, his torso, there's a big mold line. So I am just gonna scrape some of that off and just smooth it out, removing most of it, if not all of it. Trying to be ultra careful on his shoulder so we don't get a kind of flat spot. On this shoulder, you can see a bit of that sprue still remaining. So perfect place to just Snip that off with the craft knife. And another mold line just to take a little bit of work onto. Just need to give him a facial now. And again, just a little bit of extra sprue leaving that was left behind here. So I'll just try and tidy that up. Moving on from there, you just might want to do a little bit of filing. If any of it's still sticky, a bit prominent and you can't, you can't get the blade to, or there's just a little bit to smooth down. So where I'll bust out the file. Again, his face is just really hard to get to. I couldn't quite get the knife in. So just slow and steady, filing that bump down. It's getting smoother. You can feel it with your finger. So really you want to spend as much time preparing your miniature as you probably care about it looking on the table. If you're going for parade, if this is a showpiece, you want to spend quite a bit of time making sure you get rid of all of these defects. If you're just looking to play and you're going battle ready, quick paint jobs, you know, speed painting, that sort of thing. It, I still find like bad mold lines are gonna upset you in the long run. So it's worth spending a little bit of time getting rid of some of them, no matter how fast you paint it. But some of them just aren't worth it. And you know, there's a sense of irony here. I'm spending more time cleaning up this model before I paint it than I'm gonna spend painting it. So do, just trying to do, adjust accordingly. I've cared less and less about mold lines as I've progressed through the hobby. We'll grab ourselves a 25 mil base, just double check. Yeah, that looks about 25 mil. And just before we start the gluing stage, I'm going to snip down a little bit off of all of these push fit pegs just to make sure they're going nice and snug and don't have, don't, you know, it's going to lower the chance of um, but this, the pieces not lining up and creating gaps. So I tend to tend to trim just half a mil, a mil off. That was maybe a bit too much. You see that? They're, they're close, but I don't put the miniatures under much pressure, so they're probably not going to fall out, not going to lower too much structural integrity, but let's grab this one here. 
And that's all on this model. So on to gluing this. I'm going to put a little bit of glue in his hole. And I'm going to get a little bit on his shoulder as well. Oh, this is going to be difficult. Just a little smidge. I probably should have put it on the other piece. But what's done is done. Just to make sure that sits snug onto his chest. And then we'll take this front armour and snap that into place. Got some glue on my finger. Watch your fingers. Oh no, this is okay. We're using plastic glue. Just wash your fingers. You'll be okay. Next, we'll glue on his face. I'm just going to put it on the peg this time because I've got it in my hand. And then for his banner, I really wish I didn't cut that down so much because I'm not actually going to glue this. I will come back after I've painted the miniature and we will glue it. But look how much that could be in the way. Painting the back's just going to be a lot easier if his head's not so close to it. So I'm going to essentially, yeah, we'll just leave this unassembled and I can pop that off as and when I'll, I'll click it on to prime it and it'll probably be in place to glue uh, to paint some of it but it's so nice to be able to remove pieces pieces like that and just be able to paint the front and backs effortlessly but let's attach it to his base because oh, that's going to make it easier to hold so we'll just run the glue down one side of his base and a little bit on his foot as well just so it sits snug onto his base and then click him in Oh, look at that. I've put his foot on the wrong side of the base. Why did nobody warn me? Don't set, don't set, don't set. Didn't even notice that. Uh, his back foot needs to go in that little notch there. Totally missed that. Well caught, just in time. Thanks for pointing that out, guys. Anyway, stick him in there, let the glue dry. And Bob's your uncle, fan is your aunt. So this is him complete, looking pretty swish. I'm excited to go and paint this guy. There we go. That's probably going to be the last assembly video I'm going to do. And let, well, let me know in the comments below if you would like to see some more. Maybe I won't explain the tools every time. Let me know what would help you guys. I just feel like you might be able to see now they are a piece of cake to follow the instructions with a few simple steps and you're getting beautifully assembled miniatures, not taking too much time, not too much preparation. And they just look, oh, look at the, oh, look at it, look at it. I'm excited to go and paint it. As you can guess, probably going to be painting this next so do hit subscribe if you would like to see this and and check out the what was this this was a gut rippers is it a gut ripper when it's singular i don't know but check out that painting video speed paint if anybody would like to see that that is available on the channel as well thank you all ever so much for watching and as i said leave some tips suggestions improvements in the comments below to help not only myself but anybody else watching this video thank you all ever so much and i'll see you again soon While I am trying to show other new painters, new miniatures, new people, not new, I'm not trying to show new miniatures what to do. I'm not, what am I even talking about? <clears throat> I nearly choked on the dust. And Bob's your uncle, uh, somebody's your aunt.